Good evening, everyone, and thank you for coming to the virtual presentation for the West Side uh, Neighborhood Recommendations and Findings. My name is Michael Prusa, and I am part of the city staff that is managing this project. Joining me from the city is Jennifer Loudon, Andrew, Andy Hines, and Christine Rhodes. From KLOA, we have Michael Worthman and Eric Russell. In late 2018, residents from the West Side neighborhood came to City Council with concerns regarding traffic and requested a neighborhood traffic study. Staff began the consultant selection process and selected Kennig, Lindgren, O'Hara, Abuna Incorporated, or KLOA, to conduct this tra neighborhood traffic study. Staff reached out to residents with the SurveyMonkey, which provided a list of locations where residents felt traffic issues persisted. This resident survey done by staff, along with the survey that was also done by the West Side Homeowners Association, provided KLOA with locations on where they should target the traffic study. Along with the two surveys, KLOA also had conversations with both schools in the neighborhood and other stakeholders. The next steps of this project include going to the Transportation Advisory Board and the City Council for review and approval. With the ongoing pandemic, staff felt that the best way to show the recommendations from the traffic study was through a virtual presentation. This presentation will go over the recommendations and study findings along with a question and answer segment at the end. All questions can be asked through the chat feature in Zoom. The chat button is located at the bottom of the Zoom window. These questions will be answered following a 10 minute break after the presentation. If we have questions that are not able to be answered, the answers of those questions will be answered and put on the website following the meeting. I'll now begin the presentation. Good evening, my name's Michael Worthman. I'm a principal with the firm of Kenick, Lindgren, O'Hara, Abuna, Inc., KLOA, Inc. KLOA is a traffic and transportation engineering firm located in Rosemont, Illinois. We were retained by the city of Naperville to perform the traffic study for the West Side neighborhood. Tonight, we'd like to present the preliminary findings and recommendations of the study. I will start out and present the tasks that were completed and the preliminary findings, and my colleague, Eric Russell, will then present the recommendations. We will be here after the presentation to answer any questions that you have. The West Side neighborhood is located immediately west of downtown Naperville. It is generally bordered by the Metra and BNSF rail line on the north, Washington Street in downtown Naperville on the east, Centennial Park in the DuPage River on the south, and Burlington Park in the DuPage River on the west. The neighborhood consists mostly of single family homes and also includes Naper Elementary School and Washington Junior High School. A number of tasks were completed as part of the study, including one, reviewing all transportation related information and data, two, performing extensive field surveys and observations of the transportation system, including the drop off and pickup operation and bus loading at the two schools, three, conducting daily traffic counts, speed surveys at 25 locations, and weekday morning and evening peak period vehicle, pedestrian, and bicycle counts at 13 intersections. Four, collecting and evaluating the crash data within the neighborhood. Five, attending meetings with city staff and school officials. And six, developing recommendations that address traffic volumes and speed within the neighborhood, pedestrian and bicycle safety, traffic circulation around the schools, traffic control, pedestrian signage and crosswalk markings, and parking regulations. 
Regarding the neighborhood street system, all of the streets have one lane in each direction except Washington Street, which has two lanes in each direction. All of the streets within the neighborhood have a posted speed limit of 25 miles per hour except for the 20 mile per hour school zones located adjacent to the two schools. Parking is generally permitted on one or both sides of all of the streets within the neighborhood. Most of the streets are classified as local streets within the neighborhood, except Jefferson Avenue and Mill Street, which are classified as collector streets, and Parkway Drive, Benton Avenue, and portions of Douglas Avenue, Spring Avenue, and Eagle Street, which are classified as neighborhood collector streets. As part of the study, KLOA performed daily traffic counts and speed surveys at 25 locations within the neighborhood. The counts and surveys were performed over a three-day midweek period in late April and early May 2019. The counts and surveys were conducted on all of the collector streets and neighborhood collector streets, except for Parkway Drive, as well as a select number of local streets. This exhibit shows the results of the daily traffic counts at each of the 25 locations within the neighborhood. Please note that at each location, the daily traffic counts are shown by direction. The streets in which daily traffic counts were performed were categorized by functional classification and the daily volumes were compared with typical city-wide ranges experienced on similar type streets, which is summarized in the attached table. From the table, it can be seen that of the 25 locations where daily traffic counts were conducted, only two locations had daily volumes that exceeded the city-wide ranges. These locations included Mill Street between Spring Avenue and Douglas Avenue and Eagle Street between Douglas Avenue and Franklin Avenue. It is important to note that the daily volumes on these two streets just exceeded the city-wide ranges. Lastly, it should be noted that at 17 of the 25 locations, the daily traffic volumes were just over or fell within the lower half of the volume ranges. This exhibit illustrates the average and 85th percentile speeds at the 25 locations within the neighborhood. The average and 85th percentile speeds are shown by direction. It should be noted that the 85th percentile speed represents the speed at or below in which 85% of the vehicles are traveling. The 85th percentile speed, or the prevailing speed, is typically used to set speed limits. Similar to the daily traffic volumes, the streets in which speed surveys were performed were categorized by functional classification, and the 85th percentile speeds were compared with typical city-wide ranges experienced on similar type streets and is summarized in the attached table. From the table, it can be seen that of the 25 locations, none of the locations had 85th percentile speeds that exceeded the city-wide ranges. Further, 13 of the 25 locations had 85th percentile speeds that were below the city-wide ranges. As such, the 85th 
percentile speeds at the 25 locations all were within or below the city-wide ranges. In addition to evaluating the traffic volumes and travel speeds in the neighborhood, the study also examined other transportation operations, facilities, and devices in the neighborhood, including the drop-off pickup operations and the bus loading at the two schools, the intersection traffic control within the neighborhood, the pedestrian and bicycle facilities, signage, and crossings within the neighborhood, as well as the posted speed limits, street classification, and parking regulations within the neighborhood. Good evening. My name is Eric Russell, and I am also a principal of KLOA, and I worked with Michael Worthman on the Westside Neighborhood Traffic Study. I am pleased to now present the preliminary recommendations of the study. There were several factors that were taken into consideration in selecting appropriate improvements for this neighborhood. As Michael had mentioned, we first familiarized ourselves with the issues and concerns that had been previously expressed by the residents and property owners of the neighborhood, as well as previous studies conducted by the city on traffic issues in the neighborhood. And we heard further viewpoints from our meetings with city staff and staff at District 203, Washington Junior High School, and Naper Elementary School. With this background, we collected a considerable amount of traffic data, observed traffic movements, particularly around the two schools, and analyzed the data collected. We then referenced federal and state engineering standards, city traffic policies and procedures, and the city's newly developed traffic calming toolkit. The preliminary recommendations are intended to address the locations where traffic volumes or speeds are approaching or exceed the city thresholds for the respective street classification. The recommendations are also intended to improve pedestrian safety at intersections and mid-block crossings, also to enhance the visibility of the bicycle facilities. The recommendations are intended to reduce conflicts and improve safety around the two schools and to adhere to the federal and state signage standards and traffic control conventions. And lastly, the recommendations utilize non-physical level one or level two traffic calming measures for initial implementation and evaluation. Physical traffic calming measures which are levels three and four measures, would only be considered after the non-physical measures have first been tested for effectiveness. The recommendations include changes to the traffic controls or road geometrics at several locations in the neighborhood. Three of the intersections with stop signs for one direction of travel would be converted to all-way stop control. Two of the intersections with stop signs for one direction of travel would be reversed to place the stop signs on the other streets. Three of the intersections that have yield signs would be replaced with stop signs. The stop signs at eight of the intersections would be enhanced with red retro-reflective strips inserted into the signposts for greater visibility. Parking boxes or loading zone markings would be installed on three of the streets, which will visually reduce the width of the travelway and, as a result, calm traffic speeds. Curb extensions would be installed at two intersections to reduce pedestrian crossing distances and improve pedestrian safety. Sidewalk would be installed to fill a gap at one location and one of the streets would be reoriented for one-way traffic operation. This exhibit shows the locations for these traffic control and geometric modifications. The three locations where all-way stop control would be implemented are shown with the blue circles and include the intersections of Spring Avenue and Webster Street by Washington Junior High School, 
Benton Avenue at West Street and Spring Avenue at West Street. With respect to all-way stop control on neighborhood streets, the city has a policy in the municipal code which requires a traffic evaluation that follows the guidelines of the Federal Manual on Uniform Traffic Control Devices and the Illinois Vehicle Code. The evaluation considers criteria that includes crash history, pedestrian volumes, atypical conditions, sight distance, nearby public facilities such as schools, traffic speeds, traffic volumes, and adjacent traffic control. At each of the three intersections, the thresholds were achieved warranting all-way stop control. The two locations where the stop controls would be reversed and placed instead on the other street include the offset intersections of West Street with Van Buren Avenue and Stevens Street, and at West Street with Franklin Avenue and Cottage Street. These offset intersections currently have an unconventional form of traffic control, whereby the stop signs are placed on West Street rather than on the cross streets that terminate at West Street. Conventional traffic control at these intersections, as guided by the Federal Manual on Uniform Traffic Control Devices and the Illinois Vehicle Code, requires traffic on the terminating street to yield the right-of-way to traffic on the non-terminating street, which at these intersections is West Street. The reversal of the stop control at these intersections thus makes the traffic control at these intersections conventional by federal and state standards. The yield signs would be replaced by stop signs on Wilson Avenue and Douglas Avenue, on Wilson Avenue at Laird Street, and on Cottage Street at Fremont Street. Parking boxes would be installed on both sides of Mill Street between Jefferson Avenue and Spring Avenue similar to the boxes that are currently located on Jefferson Avenue. Parking boxes would also be installed on the south side of Spring Avenue along the Washington Junior High School frontage, similar to the boxes on other segments of the street. And a loading zone would be marked on Benton Avenue along the Naper Elementary School frontage to guide the car line, similar to the marked zone along Eagle Street. Curb extensions would be installed at the crosswalk on Jefferson Avenue at West Street and at the crosswalk on Mill Street at Douglas Avenue, where crossing guards currently assist students traveling to school. A new sidewalk would be installed along the north side of Douglas Avenue from West Street to approximately 165 feet west of Laird Street to close the gap in the pedestrian system and the segment of Eagle Street between Benton Avenue and Jefferson Avenue would be converted to one-way southbound traffic operation to reduce conflicts around Naper Elementary School. This slide shows examples of some of the recommended traffic control and geometric modifications. The photo in the upper left corner shows the parking boxes that are currently located on the north side of Spring Avenue by Washington Junior High School. The recommendation would be to install the same boxes on the other side of the street to narrow the travelway. The photo in the upper right corner shows an example of the curb extensions currently located on Jackson Avenue at West Street. A similar design is proposed on Jefferson Avenue at West Street and on Mill Street at Douglas Avenue. The photo in the lower left corner shows the current loading zone marking on Eagle Street adjacent to Naper Elementary School. A similar lane line is recommended on Benton Avenue where the car line wraps around the corner. The photo in the lower right corner shows one of the locations where the yield sign would be replaced with a stop sign, this one on Cottage Street at Fremont Street. And the photo in the center shows an example of the increased visibility of a stop sign when a red retroreflective strip is inserted into the stop sign post. The recommendations also include upgrades to enhance pedestrian and bicycle safety along the neighborhood streets and at the intersections. 
at four intersections, the current crosswalks would be made more prominent through additional signage and markings. At 12 intersections, the crosswalks would be replaced with the city's current school pedestrian standard, which has markings that provide the highest level of visibility. At seven intersections, these high visibility crosswalks would be installed where no crosswalks currently exist. At 15 intersections, stop lines would be installed in alignment with the stop signs, but set back from the crosswalks to designate the stopping point for cars and create better separation from pedestrians in the crosswalk. There are four locations where the word school would be installed on the street. Shared lane markings would be installed on the streets that are currently designated as bike routes to increase motorist awareness of bicyclists and to help identify the location on the street where bicyclists are entitled to ride. And at two locations, signs are recommended that reinforce that it is unlawful to pass school buses while they are loading. The recommendations also include upgrades to enhance pedestrian and bicycle safety along the neighborhood streets and at the intersections. At four intersections, the current crosswalks would be made more prominent through additional signage and markings. At 12 intersections, the crosswalks would be replaced with the city's current school pedestrian standard, which has markings that provide the highest level of visibility. At seven intersections, these high visibility crosswalks would be installed where no crosswalks currently exist. At 15 intersections, stop lines would be installed in alignment with the stop signs, but set back from the crosswalks to designate the stopping point for cars and create better separation from pedestrians in the crosswalk. There are four locations where the word school would be installed on the street. Shared lane markings would be installed on the streets that are currently designated as bike routes to increase motorist awareness of bicyclists and to help identify the location on the street where bicyclists are entitled to ride. And at two locations, signs are recommended that reinforce that it is unlawful to pass school buses while they are loading. This slide shows examples of some of the recommended traffic control and geometric modifications. This exhibit the photo in shows the, the locations corner for these pedestrian shows the and parking bicycle boxes signage that and pavement marking modifications. This slide shows examples of some of the pedestrian and bicycle safety upgrades. The photo in the upper left corner shows an upgraded crosswalk with high visibility markings, pedestrian crossing signage, and an in-street pedestrian crossing sign, this one on Jefferson Avenue at West Street. Similar upgrades would be made to the crosswalks on Jefferson Avenue at Douglas Avenue, Jefferson Avenue at Parkway Drive, and Mill Street at Douglas Avenue. The photo in the upper right corner shows the city's current school pedestrian crosswalk marking, which is highly visible to motorists. This photo is from the intersection of Webster Street and Douglas Avenue. The photo in the lower left corner shows an example of a shared lane marking, which would be installed on the streets that are designated as bike routes in the neighborhood. The photo in the lower right corner shows an example of a stop line on the pavement this one on Eagle Street at Benton Avenue. Notice how it is set back from the crosswalk. The image in the center depicts Illinois' unlawful to pass stopped bus sign, which would be installed in both directions on Douglas Avenue adjacent to Washington Junior High School. The recommendations also include measures to reinforce the posted speed limits in the neighborhood. New speed limit signs would be posted at 11 locations with the signs supplemented with highly visible yellow borders. At four locations, the existing speed limit signs would be retrofitted with the yellow borders. At two locations, the 25 mile per hour speed limit or the word slow would be installed on the pavement. 
and there are seven locations where targeted speed enforcement is recommended via police presence and or use of the speed radar trailer. This exhibit shows the locations where the speed limit signs and pavement marking recommendations would be implemented. The existing speed limit signs that would be retrofitted with yellow borders are located along Jefferson Avenue as depicted on the map by the 25 mile per hour squares with a yellow line around them. The new speed limit signs, which would also incorporate the yellow borders, would be located along Douglas Avenue, Mill Street, Benton Avenue, Eagle Street, West Street, and Ewing Street, as depicted on the map by the 25 mile an hour squares with a blue and yellow line around them. The two locations where a 25 mile an hour speed limit or the word slow would be installed on the pavement are on northbound and southbound Eagle Street between Douglas Avenue and Benton Avenue. This slide shows examples of some of the speed control recommendations. The photo in the upper left corner shows an example of how the speed limit signs are made more visible when retrofitted with a yellow border. This one from Mill Street. The photo in the lower left corner shows an example of a speed radar trailer used for speed enforcement. The photos in the upper right corner and lower right corner are examples of pavement markings used to reinforce speed limits in areas where speeding is encountered. The image at the center is from the city's yard sign program and made available to assist neighborhoods with self-monitoring. This exhibit depicts some of the improvements previously discussed, but specific to the block surrounding Naper Elementary School. New signs that would be installed are depicted with orange borders around them on this map. Signs that would be removed are depicted with a red X across them on the map. The key recommendations in enhancing safety around Naper Elementary School and reducing traffic conflicts include the following. The permanent conversion of Eagle Street to one-way southbound operation between Benton Avenue and Jefferson Avenue. The allowance of a parking lane on the east side of this segment of Eagle Street except during drop-off and pickup times. The installation of a loading zone marking on Benton Avenue for the car line that wraps around the corner. Implementation of the high visibility crosswalks on all approaches of all of the intersections on the block surrounding the school. Installation of new and enhanced speed limit signs on Mill Street and the implementation of shared lane markings along the Benton Avenue bike route. Eagle Street is too narrow and carries too much traffic to efficiently operate as a two-way street adjacent to an active car line during school arrival and dismissal times. It results in traffic congestion, concerns for pedestrian safety, sight line obstructions, and a propensity for sideswipe, angle, and turning crashes, as well as collisions with cars parked in the car line. The permanent conversion of Eagle Street to one-way southbound operation between Benton Avenue and Jefferson Avenue will significantly decrease traffic volumes on Eagle Street adjacent to Naper Elementary School, resulting in fewer traffic conflicts with the school car line, reduced crash potential, and fewer pedestrian conflicts. This exhibit depicts some of the improvements previously discussed, but specific to the block surrounding Washington Junior High School. Again, new signs that would be installed are depicted with an orange border around them, and signs that would be removed are shown with a red X through them. The key recommendations in enhancing safety and reducing traffic conflicts around Washington Junior High School include the following the installation of all-way stop control 
at the intersection of Spring Avenue and Webster Street. The installation of parking boxes along the south side of Spring Avenue to effectively narrow the travelway to help reduce traffic speeds on Spring. The installation of the high visibility crosswalk markings on all of the approaches of all of the intersections surrounding the school. The removal of the unprotected mid-block crosswalk on Spring Avenue at Big Rail Drive. The installation of the word school on the pavement along Spring Avenue and Douglas Avenue. And the installation of the unlawful to pass stopped school bus signs on Douglas Avenue. This concludes our presentation. We would be happy to answer any questions that you may have. At this time, uh, we're gonna take a 10 minute break. Uh, we're still taking questions and we will start up the question and answer segment of the presentation at, we'll say 741. Thank you.
not need to stay here. Welcome back. Uh, we will begin the question and answer portion of the presentation. Uh, I'll read the questions as we get them in. Uh, first question, please explain the significance of the citywide range values referenced for the traffic volume and speeds. How are they developed and how are they used in a study like this? So the uh, city and staff, we have been collecting traffic data, which includes speeds and volumes for um, for the better part of the last 20 years. And each year we usually go out and do probably between 30 and 40 traffic studies. And within these traffic studies, we collect traffic at on collector streets, neighborhood connectors, local roads, including arterials. And with all of these studies throughout the last 20 years, we're able to kind to to see a average and an above average uh, or, or what we would typically see and find on these roads. And that is where those ranges come from. Uh, so, you know, for a collector, we typically see these types of ranges for the 85th percentile and the average uh, speed and the average volume. Uh, the next question, how is the presence of Little Shepherd School and Church and an active funeral home considered in the study? What effect did the Forest Preserve, Riverwalk, Centennial Beach, and the VFW have on the study? And how did the presence of the businesses on Spring West of Mill Street impact the study? Um, and we're gonna let uh, KLOA answer this one. Hi, uh, Michael Worthman from KLOA. Uh, good to see everybody tonight. And thank you uh, for coming and listening to the presentation. Um, these are all factored in uh, within the traffic counts that we conducted, uh, both the daily traffic counts at the 25 locations and the intersection um, vehicle, pedestrian, bicycle counts that we conducted at 13 intersections, as well as the speed studies. All of this takes in all of the activity uh, within the neighborhood and surrounding the neighborhood, including the businesses, the parks, and all of that. Um, we also observed the operations of the whole neighborhood on many occasions in both the schools um, all of the existing data that we looked at, all of this takes into account all of the uses. Um, based on all this data, all of our recommendations are developed to address any of the issues and concerns that we found um, by evaluating this data and also listening to uh, the concerns of the residents as well as staff. So we don't look, them at, look at it specifically, we look at it in a whole neighborhood perspective and our recommendations are there to address all of these issues, all of the concerns, and that's how we looked at it. The third question is, have the yield signs on Cottage and Wilson uh, been a demonstrable problem other than your appeal to standards? Uh, the yield signs on, Co on Cottage and Wilson are being replaced uh, with stop signs because we want to keep it uh, consistent across uh, neighborhood wide. Along with that, we find that stop signs increase compliance at those intersections. Um, next question. I live on the northwest corner of Webster and Franklin. Uh, simple changes will help to make this intersection more safe for children walking to school as well as for vehicle traffic. There are two smaller trees within 10 feet of the stop signs, which seem to block the view of the stop signs for drivers eastbound and westbound on Franklin. The trees on the east side of Webster should be removed and the trees on the west side of Webster should either be removed or trimmed. The second change would be to paint a bold, wide, white line on Franklin just before stop signs on both the east and west sides of Webster. These changes would help make the intersection at the corner of Franklin and Webster safer. We're gonna have KLA answer that question. Thank you, Michael, and good evening, everyone. This is Eric Russell. Uh, again, thank you for joining us. Um, in response to the question uh, regarding the trees, we can certainly uh, work with city staff take a look at the tree locations, um, determine if they're within the line of sight and whether uh, they would need to be removed in order to provide adequate line of sight or simply trimmed. Um, that's simple enough to do. Um, as far as the, the line on the pavement, I think you're referring to a stop line. And we have recommended numerous locations within the city 
at stop locations within the neighborhood where a stop line would be installed in advance of the stop sign and in advance of the crosswalk as well. And this would be one of those locations. Thank you, Eric. The next question, how does the city and KLA propose to assess or measure the effectiveness of the measures being recommended? In other words, how do we gain assurance the safety of area, of area residents is improved by implementing these recommendations? Uh, once these uh, improvements are made within the neighborhood, the city will be going through each improvement uh, for a follow-up study. Uh, so this could include, uh, you know, just a volume or a speed study or an observation study to ensure that the implementations are uh, working correctly and there's no changes within the neighborhood. And this will happen about six months to 12 months after the uh, implementations are placed. Uh, this is because we want traffic within the neighborhood to become used to what is uh, different within the neighborhood. The next question is, what are the specific problems assigned to the consultant to confirm? Uh, with our, back in March of 2019, we issued a survey monkey to all residents via postcard. And with the survey monkey, we got a lot of feedback concerning specific issues relating to traffic within the neighborhood. Uh, that survey, along with another survey that we received from the West Side Homeowners Association, were used to determine the specific issues uh, that uh, the consult we wanted the consultant to take a look at. The next question is, what is the estimated cost of implementing these changes as proposed? And if adapted, when would these changes be implemented? Um, KLA, you uh, can take the first part of that question. Uh, we have not yet. Uh looked at the cost of the uh, total cost of the improvements. Um, I will say many of the improvements are what we consider low cost improvements. Uh, many of them are pavement marking changes, sign changes, um, those sort of things. So um, the total cost uh, should be uh, relatively low uh, given the type of uh, improvements recommendations that we're uh, recommending. And then for that second part of the question, I can take uh, these changes. Well, the uh, as Michael mentioned, the low cost ones can be implement implemented in the next year. Uh, some of the higher cost items, including the curb extensions at Mill and Douglas and Jefferson and West uh, may be implemented within the next two years uh, as they would have to be included into the budget. Uh, really quick, just a note uh, for those that have their hands raised, uh, can you please uh, lower your hands and you can just answer or you could ask any questions that you have within the chat box and we will get to that uh, question as soon as possible. Thank you. Uh, the next question is how will making Eagle Street one way impact traffic volumes on Mill Street? Um, KLA, can you answer that? Eric? Sure, I can take the lead on that. Um, well, the volumes on Eagle Street were highest during the school hours, school drop off and pickup times. Uh, so most importantly, uh, we're looking at the school volumes continuing to be mostly in the, in the southbound direction. Um, it's the reverse direction traffic that would then shift over to the parallel streets would be Mill Street to the west, uh, Webster Street to the east. Um, we don't. We we see that the um, the volume ranges that are currently on Mill Street are within the typical range for the city for a collector street, and uh, we look at what the northbound volume is on Eagle Street that might shift over to Mill Street. Uh, the overall volume on Mill still remains within those ranges. So while there might be a little more traffic on Mill Street, uh, it doesn't put it uh, over the threshold where additional recommendations were. Um, included in our study beyond what we've already made to calm traffic along the mill. Thank you, Eric. Uh, the next question, many businesses 
uh, Azinga, Amazon, UPS, for example, have data devices, uh, speed location on their vehicles. How does the city communicate with the businesses to educate and enforce speeding using this data? Currently, the city does not have any communication with these businesses concerning uh, their speed data that they may be collecting, uh, but it is something that we could definitely look into in the future. The uh, next question, did they consider making Eagle Street entirely one way from Spring to Jefferson? Some might be confused about the only partial one way for one block. Uh, we took a look at it. Uh, it was our opinion that it was not needed. Uh, the street is operating fine as a two-way street um, between Spring, Spring and Benton. Um, and we wanted to maintain the flexibility of the neighborhood. Uh, more importantly, um, uh, we feel and the city feels that we can adequately provide the necessary signage to make it clear uh, which part is one way and which part is two way. Um, it's common uh, to have a one way street for a certain section. Next question. Did they consider creating one way streets around Washington Middle School? one way on Spring between Washington Street and Webster and the other direction one way on Douglas between Webster and Washington? Uh, we did not consider that. Um, uh, it's our opinion that it's not required uh, talking to the principal and the school district. Uh, they were pretty comfortable with the way uh, their operation is currently operating. Uh, the big difference between um, Napier and uh, Washington is the fact that Eagle Street is a pretty narrow street. All of the pickup and drop off is located on Eagle Street. Whereas at the junior high, the pickup and drop off is uh, distrib distributed over the two streets. And those streets are a little wider and can accommodate the traffic uh, much better. Uh, next question. What will become of the current marked parking spots on the west side of Eagle Street? I believe those are between Jefferson and uh, Van Buren. Uh, KLA, can you take this one? Yeah, those um, those spaces would likely uh, remain because uh, the streets can remain a one-way southbound street, so there will still be one lane of travel. Um, there really wouldn't be a need to remove those parking spaces. There's still room to have a single uh, southbound lane. So those spaces would remain in place. Did you consider a four-way stop at the intersection of Franklin and Eagle for traffic calming? Okay. KLA, can you take that one? Yeah. Um, uh, we considered uh, four-way stops at all locations. Um, this one was Franklin and Eagle. Uh, yeah. And uh, unfortunately, Franklin and Eagle did not meet the criteria for an always stop. Um, and that's why there's not a um, one proposed at that location. Um, we are proposing a number of other improvements along Eagle Street uh, to assist in uh, pedestrian safety, as well as uh, reducing the traffic volumes along Eagle, or reducing the speeds along Eagle. Was an always stop discussed for Jefferson and West due to the level of accidents that have occurred, occurred there, coupled with the fact that it bisects our neighborhood and there are no stop signs from Mill Street to River Road along Jefferson? Yes, once again, uh, we looked at the criteria. Uh, there's criteria both uh, from uh, the Federal Highway Department as well as the city as to when always stops are warranted. Uh, Jefferson is a collector road uh, serving the greater area um, and it was not warranted at that location. However, a number of improvements are recommended at this location uh, to help slow traffic and to enhance pedestrian uh, safety. Uh, this includes the bump outs at this location which reduces the crosswalks, the distance that pedestrians will have to cross it also helps to slow traffic as it narrows uh, the roadway width. Uh, we're also looking at upgrading the uh, pedestrian signage and also enhancing the uh, crosswalk markings. 
Spring Avenue is labeled as a neighborhood connector street. What is a neighborhood connector street? Uh, the city has a master thoroughfare plan uh, that designates every single street in the city as either a local road, a neighborhood connector, a collector street, or a minor and major arterial. Uh, these are uh, defined by uh, traffic volumes. And uh, so neighborhood connectors typically uh, will collect the traffic from local roads and push them out onto collector streets or arterials. Um, was there any recommendations to limit commuter parking on Ewing Street between Douglas and Benton? Uh, this has been investigated in the past uh, from the uh, transportation team here at uh, TED. And uh, when we went out and investigated, we found that there was no occurrence of commuter parking on Ewing Street. For the elimination of the crosswalk at Big Rail and Washington Junior High, how many students are there in this development? Do you think it is likely that those students will walk to either Webster or Washington to cross? And if they continue to cross where the crosswalk is eliminated, does the absence create a more dangerous situ situation? Um, we'll take that. Um, that recommendation was made in concert with the school and the school district uh, based on a meeting we had with them. They were um, all for eliminating this uh, crosswalk. They indicated to us that uh, they had a very low number of students uh, within that development. Why are you removing crosswalk, the crosswalk across Spring Avenue at Spring and Eagle intersection? Um, a lot of the families who live on the north side of Spring rely upon this crosswalk in order to cross the street to walk to Napier. We already have high volume of cars driving down Spring. Why are we making it less safe instead of more safe for pedestrians? I'll take that one. Uh, the reason we're recommending removing that crosswalk is very similar to the reason we recommended removing the crosswalk at Big Rail Drive, and that is it's an unprotected crosswalk. There's no stop controls on Spring uh, Avenue at that location. Uh, we're putting an all-way stop control in at uh, Spring and Webster. There's already stop control on Spring at Mill to the west. The preference is for pedestrians to cross at a stop sign where traffic is required to stop. It's the safest location. And, and our preference would be rather than students crossing at this uncontrolled location at Eagle, to have parents and the students walk either to the west to Mill Street to cross Spring or to walk to the east to Webster to cross uh, Spring to get down to Napier. And we've recommended that the um, school walk route also be adjusted, particularly for uh, Washington Junior High, so that this crossing wouldn't be used to walk to school. Making Eagle Street southbound uh, certainly will enhance safety around Napier School. However, the city has many activities in the downtown area during the weekends, which, gener which generate a significant amount of neighborhood traffic on Eagle Street. Have you considered temporarily southbound only traffic on Eagle during school days instead of a permanent change? Uh, we did discuss that. Um, and it was the consensus with staff and police and fire that they preferred to keep it uh, one way at all time uh, to eliminate uh, any confusion with the temporary. And given the volumes on um, Eagle Street, we all felt that those could be accepted on the other north-south, accommodated on the other north-south streets. Um. Why are we removing and prohibiting the children at play sign? Uh, KLA, can you take that? Sure, I'll, I'll take that. And it's a two part um, question there, Michael. Oh, um, yeah. So, what is a type two pedestrian crossing and what is a type three B pedestrian crossing? Okay. Um, for several reasons, we're suggesting to remove the uh, the child play signs. 
um, primarily the signs now been removed from the federal manual on uniform traffic control devices uh, because it's proven over time that the sign's not effective. Um, motorists are so used to seeing the sign, it's generally ignored. Uh, there's actually a lot of reasons listed um, as to why it has, it's not effective. It gives children a, a sense of uh, that it's okay to play in the street. Um, a lot of different reasons that uh, communities are moving away from use of that sign so that it doesn't give a sense of security um, you know, to children that uh, any, being near the street is, is a safe place to be. So um, that's recommended that it's uh, by policy across the city that those signs be removed from the neighborhood as they wear out. Um, in most cases, the signs aren't immediately removed. They tend to be removed as they start to be, as they start to be worn out rather than replaced with a new sign uh, as they wear. Um, and then the other question, Sorry, I lost down the screen here. The type two pedestrian crossing and type three B pedestrian crossing. There we go. Uh, a type two pedestrian crossing is uh, a typical crosswalk with the high visibility markings um, that also has advanced crossing signs. So usually at the pedestrian crossings, you'll see a, a sign, school sign or a, a pedestrian sign, you know, the, the uh, diamond shaped sign with the uh, pedestrian in the middle of it with an arrow pointing down at the crosswalk. That's a type one crosswalk. A type two crosswalk has signs in advance of the crosswalk that say, basically have that same sign with the word ahead. So there's a crosswalk ahead. It's just giving motorists advance notification that there's a crosswalk ahead. That's a type two crossing. A type three A crossing in addition has an in-street pedestrian crossing sign. So something that you currently see right at Big Rail Drive on Spring, that sign in the middle of the street, portable sign, um, that is that makes it a type 3A crossing. And type 3B crossing also then adds the advanced signs giving motorists notification that there's a crosswalk ahead. Uh, so it's the same type of crossing as a 3A with the sign in the street, but it also has the advanced crossing signs. Oops, um, sorry about that. Um, next question, uh, Douglas is a neighborhood collector, which also has areas with no sidewalks on its north side beyond Laird Street. Why would you not also install sidewalk all the way through Douglas at this time? We find that areas along Douglas after the Laird Street stop sign have increased speed because of the openness of the roadway. Uh, we have had numerous accidents taking out trees along the Douglas curve. Uh, the, the sidewalk along the north side beyond Laird Street uh, will be addressed through the sidewalk gap program that's run here by the city. Um, as for the speeding, uh, KLA addressed uh, Douglas on that, at that location with enhanced speed limit signs. Uh, the next question is, uh, it's actually a comment. Um, it's intriguing to see the report uh, identifying bicycle and equestrian crossings in the neighborhood. Uh, horses should abide by the speed limit. So yeah, a little halfway uh, through the question joke there. <laughs> All right, uh, next question. Uh, for the one way on Eagle Street that is proposed, what do you see as the cons of this proposal? Of this proposal? Where would northbound traffic that comes across Eagle Street Bridge move to? Um, I can take that. Um, we don't see a whole lot of cons with it. Um, there will be some redistribution of northbound traffic for a two block um, area along Eagle Street. Uh, this traffic will be redistributed to Mill, um, Webster to an extent, and even to Washington Street. Um, as Eric indicated, uh, these roads have sufficient capacity to accommodate the traffic. Uh, more importantly, it provides a significant improvement uh, to the drop-off and pick-up operation um, at Naper Elementary School. And given the number of pedestrians and the number of vehicles, it really helps reduce uh, both the vehicle and pedestrian conflicts along Eagle Street. Um, so we're very, uh, I think this is a very good recommendation for the school. What do you see as the implications of using curb extensions at Mill and Douglas? 
mill is very busy, but mm -hmm. I do know that there have been numerous accidents at that intersection. What did you learn from the discussion with the neighbor and Washington principals? Uh, I'd be happy to take that one. Um, impl implications of the curb extensions are, are a safer intersection for uh, students and the pedestrians that need to cross Mill Street, uh, being that it's not stop controlled at Douglas. Um, also, it, it's a traffic calming measure. Uh, that in combination with the proposed parking boxes along Mill, make Mill Street, which is about 34 feet or so in width, um, but with the parking boxes on both sides, aligned with the curb extension at this intersection, the street narrows down to about 22 feet. So it gives the, a visual perception to motorists of a narrower street, which tends to slow the traffic a bit. Um, but it also provides an island per se, um, uh, island of safety for students that have to cross Mill Street going across to Washington Junior High or down to Napier. Uh, this is also a location where a crossing guard is in place. So it makes the crossing guard more visible when they're uh, out on a curb extension. Um, it makes the uh, crosswalk more visible. It makes the crossing distance for the students across the mill shorter. Uh, there's a lot of safety implications that curb extensions have. And what did we learn from our discussions with the two principals? Um, yeah, well, quite a bit. At Washington Junior High, for instance, um, concerns about speeds and volumes on Spring Avenue uh, were a bit of concern. There wasn't any stop controls from Washington Street as far west as Mill. So the intersection of Spring and Webster uh, was a concern um, and an opportunity really to create a safer environment around the school. It's very typical on the corners of blocks of schools to have always stop control. And um, this was one corner corner of uh, Washington School that, that really was missing that always stop, making for a safer crossing for students. And also uh, slowing traffic down from the, the stretch from Washington all the way to Mill. Uh, there was a concern on, um, on Douglas also with uh, buses that were loading and unloading on Douglas and some cars were bypassing the buses as they were loading and unloading. So uh, that was a bit of concern and some of the signage in place, which reiterates what the state law is um, were recommended along Douglas. Uh, Napier, uh, a lot of concern really at traffic flow on Eagle Street, which we've talked about quite a bit. The two-way traffic flow with a car line on a very narrow street, a lot of co close calls, difficulty for students crossing the street without much traffic uh, during drop-off pickup times, um, potential side swipe uh, collisions with vehicles, particularly those in the car line. There were definitely some that we saw in the uh, in the crash experience records. So um, those were the primary uh, issues that we heard from the two principals. Thank you, Eric. Uh, was the traffic study data collected on school days uh, during commuter hours or what was the method methodology? I can't say that word. Uh, KLA, can you take this one? Yeah, all of our counts were conducted in uh, late May uh, not late May, late April, early May, excuse me, uh, when school was open. Uh, the traffic count, the daily traffic counts and the speed surveys, which are done with the tubes that you see on the road, those were done for three consecutive days, a Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Uh, we also did intersection, vehicle, pedestrian, and bicycle counts. And those were done during the peak periods, the morning and afternoon commuter peak periods and also during the school uh, drop-off and pickup periods. Thank you. Um, speeds throughout our neighborhood seem high when observed. Perhaps this is because we have narrower roads than elsewhere in town due to our neighborhood's age. Does the street width have implications on the reasonableness of 85th percentile measures in our neighborhood? Uh, yes, they do. And it's a positive in your neighborhood in the fact that the narrower the street is, it typically slows down the traffic. There's more what we call friction on the roadway. The narrower it is, you're getting closer to the opposite, uh, a car coming in the opposite direction, so you naturally slow down. Slow down. Uh, that's why in some locations we're recommending parking boxes 
on some streets where it's a little wider, where the parking boxes provide a visual narrowing of the road. Thank you. Was consideration given to a four-way stop at Douglas and Parkway due to traffic, the curve and entry exit from the Forest Reserve? This was another intersection that we also evaluated for, for all-way stop. Um, as Michael had mentioned earlier, you know, intersections that uh, do have to meet certain federal standards uh, to warrant all-way stop. Um, a lot of things are taken into consideration the volume of the traffic, the number of pedestrians crossing the street, the classification of the roadways, uh, all that feeds into the, the evaluation. And at this location, it just didn't meet the warrant, the federal warrants for all way stop control. So it, it was not recommended. Thank you. Um, exactly what is compliance with respect to yield signs? Uh, the uh, yield signs follow the Illinois Vehicle Code. Uh, so the driver of a vehicle approaching a yield sign shall in obedience uh, to such a sign slow down to a speed reasonable for the existing, condi existing conditions and if required for safety to stop. Next question. It sounds like there are, a number, there are a number of improvements being made to increase safety. Which improvements are being made to increase traffic flow? I can take that. Um, most of our recommendations are more uh, signage, uh, pavement markings, um, those sort of improvement, traffic calming improvements. Um, they're not necessarily uh, changing the flow of traffic. What we're trying to do is calm the traffic, uh, provide the same flow of traffic, but making sure it stops and uh, slows down through the neighborhood and abides by the various regulations um, and rules of the road within the neighborhood. Thank you. Uh -oh. Where are the responses to the surveys? Please summarize the concerns and issues. Uh, we can post the survey responses to the, um, the website after this meeting. Uh, they mostly uh, contained uh, issues regarding to traffic volume and speeds and pedestrian safety within the neighborhood. Uh, but we can post a summarization of those comments that were made back in, uh, I believe in March and April of 2019. Was there any consideration given to limiting street parking to only one side of several streets? Uh, we looked at it. We didn't see a need for it at this time. Uh, more importantly, one of the uh, big concerns we've heard in the neighborhood is the speed of traffic. And as we talked about narrow road, narrow or excuse me, roads, help to reduce speed, so parking on both sides of the streets helps is one way to calm traffic on the uh, streets and within the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Is there a written report of, on the results of the traffic study? Uh, consultant recommendations. There are some tables posted on the website, but some tables may be missing. Uh, there, there will be a report that comes out from this from KLA, and that will be presented uh, at the TAB meeting in December. Uh, next question. Uh, Eagle Street to Spring, or I am surprised Eagle Street from Benton to Spring is not also considered a neighborhood connector. Why is that, especially given commuter traffic through the neighborhood? Um, for those of you that may not know, Eagle Street is a neighborhood connector uh, from uh, Benton to Aurora Avenue and north of Benton to Spring. It is considered a local road. Uh, this is because uh, Benton Avenue is a neighborhood connector and the thought is that traffic would flow to uh, Mill Street or to Washington via Benton instead of using uh, the northern route to Spring uh, because the intersection at Mill Street is a two-way stop and the intersection at Washington and Spring does not allow left turns onto Washington. 
and uh, is also not uh, uh, stop controlled or signal controlled. Uh, next question. Uh, from the study, I haven't heard discussion of traffic on Benton Street heading east uh, via construction vehicles. Uh, KLA. So uh, to replay that question, uh, from the study, I haven't heard discussion of construction traffic on Benton Street heading east, I imagine, to Washington. Um, yeah, I, I don't know that uh, the counts that we took um, indicated there was any significant volume of construction vehicles. Um, not quite sure what the question is. Uh, is leading to there the way it's written, but um, maybe it can be clarified and we can we can follow up on that one. Yeah. Okay, would the, would the resident clarify that question if they're still in the meeting uh, concerning Benton Street and construction traffic heading east? Um, next question, can you elaborate more on the criteria uh, that was not met for the intersection of Franklin Avenue and Eagle Street? I imagine uh, the stop sign. Yeah. No problem. Uh, the city has a very specific criteria uh, when it comes to always stop, excuse me, and it looks at uh, crash history, pedestrian volume, uh, atypical conditions, site, site distance, um, nearby public facilities, the speed of the traffic, uh, the volume of traffic, as well as adjacent traffic control. And they actually have a, um, um, you actually get points for each of these and you have to surpass a certain amount of total points uh, before you can get an all way stop. And uh, as we indicated, um, why it received some points for some of these criteria is it just did not meet the maximum where an all way stop uh, would be warranted at this location. What are the next steps and timing of this project? Uh, will there be a planning meeting, city council, and will staff be making a recommendation? Um, this is our recommendation with KLA, and the next steps are taking the, this public, uh, these public comments and questions and bringing them to uh, the Transportation Advisory Board. And we anticipate that meeting to be in December of 2020. Uh, following that, uh, we will then go to city council uh, sometime in, in mid to late December, potentially early January. And uh, from there, uh, following a potential city council approval, uh, implementations will begin to be made in 2021. Uh, to be read as a comment, uh, one resident does not support the temporary one way on Eagle Street. Um, would the opening of the cow tunnel uh, with contemporary safety design contribute to less vehicular traffic and a safer pedestrian experience? Uh, it's a good question. Uh, unfortunately, the cow tunnel is out of the scope of the uh, project. Why is there no crosswalk at Ewing and Jefferson? It's highly used by pedestrians attending events at Centennial Beach. Well, there's no crosswalk there because there's no stop control on Jefferson at that location. Uh, and we don't want to encourage people to cross Jefferson uh, where there is no stop control when they can travel one block to the east and uh, cross under stop control at Mill Street, or they can cross one block to the west at West Street where there's a type 3A, soon to be type 3B crosswalk, which has the pedestrian crossing signs, crosswalk markings, and the in-street uh, crosswalk sign. I believe you indicated that on one-way blocks of Eagle Street, you would add parking spots on the east side of Eagle. Then later, you indicated that the existing parking on the west side of the street would be allowed to remain. I do not believe Eagle Street is wide enough for parking on both sides plus one lane of traffic. Uh, especially when trucks are coming through the neighborhood? Um, I think the street is wide enough. Uh, you currently have two-way traffic flow today, plus 
a parking lane on one side or a car lane uh, adjacent to the school. Um, so with only one lane of traffic, which is a need of only about 11 to 12 feet of pavement, uh, the remaining 14 feet or so uh, could serve a parking lane on both sides of the street. So there should be adequate space for both a single lane southbound of traffic and a parking lane on both sides of the street or a car lane adjacent to the school. What type of traffic enforcement, uh, for as an example, truck routes, do you see for the auto pond at the west end of Spring Avenue? Uh, this is something that we'll follow up with the police department on, the, on this. Uh, if you could be more detailed in the comment section, it'd be appreciated. Um, next question. Uh, which year was the data collected? Was it collected in 2020 or 2020 or 2019? If these numbers are from 2020, they likely underestimate the traffic volume. Uh, they were all conducted in uh, 2019. Uh, will this presentation be available to watch later? Uh, yes, the presentation is being recorded and it will be uploaded to the project website uh, uh, after the meeting. Um, to be read as a comment, uh, my only reservation is the permanent one-way change to Eagle Street. Pushing more volume to Mill Street is a concern, especially for downtown events. Can the stop warrant counts for the intersection we asked about be made available? For example, the Franklin and Eagle, uh, West and Jefferson, and Douglas and Parkway. Uh, y yes, they will be made available. Um, how can residents voice their support for these recommendations to move them forward through the tab meeting and city council meeting? Uh, residents can send a written support by email. Uh, in the postcard that was sent out to residents uh, about a month ago, it was noted that public comment is open until November 13th. And these comments will be read uh, to the Transportation Advisory Board when this, uh, these recommendations come across the board. You can also attend the Transportation Advisory Board uh, during that event. And uh, that tab is anticipated to be December 3rd, which is a Thursday. And those start at seven o'clock. Um. Uh, you do realize that people will still cross at intersections, or this to be read as a comment, you do realize that people will still cross at intersections where there are not stop signs, and often these crosswalks are the only thing that gets cars to slow down for these pedestrians. I know my family will not walk three blocks out of our way to go to a stop sign where we can see Naper Elementary from our house, uh, but we need to cross at a non-stop sign pedestrian crossing you, that you are taking away. Is there a park, is there parking on the east side of Eagle at the one way? Do you think it would be used for student pickup and create a problem because there is no crosswalk right in front of the school? Uh, for example, people wouldn't, wouldn't, wanna, wouldn't want to cross at Benton and back to where the crosswalk across from the school. People, excuse me. Uh, people wouldn't want. Um, so I guess, uh, uh, for KLA, do you think uh, the east side of Eagle Street where the parking is will be used for student pickup and create a problem because there is no crosswalk right in front of the school? Uh, so before when we had the crosswalk, it kind of separated, uh, but that was taken away, I believe, in 2018. Yeah, we're not, we're not recommending that the parking lane be um, available for use during the school drop-off pickup times. It only would be available during the off school times for residents to use generally. Uh, also, um, the school should have policies in place as to where drop off and pickup is to occur. And they need to really monitor that with their with the parents. Uh, so the, the car line flow would continue as it is currently uh, in a southbound direction on Eagle Street. And the school would need to reiterate with parents that there's no drop off to occur um, in the, in the, uh, on the opposite side of the street. Okay. Um, uh, concern with the truck traffic on the auto pond, 
uh, this question was read earlier, um, is that it typically goes up and out Douglas rather than to Mill Street or to Jefferson uh, going through the neighborhood at a higher rate of speed. Uh, thank you for the clarification and we will pass this along to the police department. Sure. Um, what are your concerns and issues identified in the survey? Uh, Jennifer Loudon will take this question. Uh, thank you very much for the question. So just to clarify um, with respect to the surveys, we had a couple of points of uh, resident input that kicked off this project. Um, we had several points of input um, that were brought forth to the Transportation Advisory Board, um, as well as uh, City Council um, regarding concerns in the neighborhood that we helped um, use to formulate the scope of the work that we did here. Um, a lot of the concerns that we heard were um, concerns about uh, cars ignoring stop signs, um, driving at excessive speeds, inconsistent signage at the intersections, um, confusing signage. Um, this really was, a, was in reference to the um, alternating um, stop signs um, at a lot of the intersections, um, concerns about the volumes of cars, um, as well as um, a lot of concerns um, surrounding school circulation um, at Naper Elementary. Um, in addition to hearing that input um, at the beginning of the, um, this process, um, we, when we sent out the survey, um, we had asked residents to uh, provide the locations um, where they saw the most concerns. And what we did with that information was we essentially tabulated by location um, and that was what was used to determine which locations were part of the data collection and observations that were made by uh, KLOA. Thank you. Along, along with that, uh, a, a lot of the recommendation or the, uh, uh, the survey concerns were part of the recommendations that were made by KLOA. Um, they, 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 they guided uh, the traffic study and, and guided a lot of our recommendations based off observations and data included. Um, and I believe that is all the questions that we have for this. Um, so I'd like to thank everyone for uh, coming out and listening to the recommendations and data findings from our consultant KLA. I hope a lot of the, I hope the questions were answered. Again, if any questions trickle in here, uh, we will answer them on the website along with all the questions uh, that were posted. A sheet will be posted uh, on the website that has all the answers to these questions. And if you guys have any uh, concerns or comments along the way, feel free to email myself and that email is at uh, PRO usam at naperville.il.us and thank you thank you for your time thank you